Hi, I'm Jared Richards with the law firm of Bennett Tuller, Jonathan Deere. And today we're going to talk about the order that people get paid on the sale of a business. Um, and this can be on a sale or even a bankruptcy of the business. And the order goes, essentially, creditors and then equity holders. In a bankruptcy, there's only going to be enough assets for certain people to get paid. And so, generally, we're going to exclude the equity holders and we're going to look at the creditors. And in that case, Secured creditors get paid before unsecured creditors. And depending on the state in which your business is operating, in some circumstances, inside creditors have to wait to get paid until outside creditors. Inside creditors would be officers, owners, board members, anybody who has an interest in the company that has been sold and has made a loan or other you know, debt instrument to the company. So. The reason this matters is understanding this order will help you better understand what your equity position really is worth in a company. So let's look at an example and you'll have a, a better understanding of how these people get paid. Um, here in this example we're selling Kafka and we're, we, we've sold the company for one million dollars. In this company we have I think we have uh, $200,000 in debt. <laughs> um, there's $200,000 in debt. There's $100,000 for outside creditors, and there's $100,000 held by inside creditors. So, of this hundred, of this million dollar sales price, the first $200,000 go to satisfy the outside and inside creditors. Here, the inside creditors, they don't care that they're inside creditors, even if there are states that would treat them differently than outside creditors, because guess what? They both got paid back exactly what they were owed. Great. So then, uh, you as an equity holder, you know that because there was $200,000 in debt, you, the maximum amount of money that which, in which you'd be able to participate and share in would be $800,000. But then we need to look at the types of equity stakes in the company. In this particular company, instead of just common stock, there's also a class of stock called preferred stock. And those preferred holders own 30% of the company. It's called preferred stock because it comes with certain preferences. And these preferences often are economic benefits that the preferred holders get. In this case, one of those preferences is that the holders of the preferred stock get a 1x liquidation preference, which is one type of benefit, and then they also get to fully participate with the common stock holders. Well, what does that mean? 1x liquidation preference means before any of the common stockholders get anything back, they get the money that they put into the company first. So in this scenario, the preferred holders holding 30% put in $300,000 of initial investment. And because they have a 1x liquidation preference, of this $800,000 remaining, they get $300,000 back. After this $300,000 is paid back, there remains $500,000 that now will be split by the preferred holders and common holders. Being, it's being split between the preferred and the common because another preference that the preferred holders have is a fully participating right. This means that even after they get back their liquidation preference of $300,000 of their initial investment, they get to share and split based on these percentages. So of the $500,000 remaining, the preferred get another $150,000 and the common get $350,000. So that $350,000 gets split up among all these common holders. So if you're one of those few common holders, let's say you owned um, you know, 30% of the common stock of the company, you're going to be sharing, or, or I guess not even 30% of the common stock, but 30% of the company, you're going to get, um, well let's say 30% of the common, you're going to get one third of the remaining um, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars that the common would split right here, and of that one hundred and fifty thousand dollars that the preferred get, plus their three hundred thousand dollars of initial investment, you can see that the preferred right, even though they only have thirty percent of the company on the sale, they got four hundred fifty thousand of the eight hundred, and the common only got three hundred and fifty. So these preferences do matter. Let's take one scenario in, of a bankruptcy scenario. Um, let's change the sale price from $1 million to $150,000. This company really messed up. 
$150,000 is all the assets are worth. The trustee came in, he sold everything that he could possibly find, and there's only $150,000 cash. But there are creditors um, that have claims worth $200,000. And instead of inside and outside creditors, let's call them secured and unsecured. Let's say that there are secured creditors who have $150,000 in debt, and there's an unsecured creditor who has a $50,000 $50,000 in debt, the company's indebted to them. Because there's only $150,000 left, and the secured creditor has a $150,000 claim, and they perfected it, they get all $150,000, and the unsecured creditor gets nothing. So that will probably help you now understand why credit card companies who are unsecured creditors charge higher interest rates to mitigate the risk that they have as unsecured creditors, versus low interest rates that a company secured loans like your mortgage. So consider these things when you're an equity holder in a company to really evaluate how much is my equity really worth.